Thursday, September 13, 2018. This video is about projectile motion. It's our catapult project presented to you by Thomas Allred and Libby Clausen. So, first of all, let's talk about what you're going to need to buy to make a catapult. We use a fairly simple idea for our catapult, but it still requires about five things that you'll have to go out and purchase. So, number one, you're going to need about 12 popsicle sticks. And you need them to be a little bit bigger than the normal popsicle stick size. You'll need, like, the hot wax variety of sticks. Number two, you'll need a hot glue gun and hot glue sticks. Be careful. Number three, you'll need a few clothespins. And number four, you're going to need two caps of the exact same size. So you could go out and buy a couple bottles of olive oil or apple cider vinegar or really anything with a small cap that's fairly firm. And number five, you're going to need one rubber band. So are you wondering what the finished product looks like? Here it is. As you can see, you can see the couple of um, bottle caps on there and all of our extra thick popsicle sticks and a rubber band, some hot glue. As you can see, it turned out very well and simple, yet effective. So now, let's transition into the math of it all. To test out our final project, we decided to throw a few marbles. We decided to do more than one test because with more tests comes more precision and accuracy. So with multiple te te uh, tests, we figured out our results, and these were the results that we came up with. When the marble left the catapult, it left at an angle of 50 degrees. We decided that we needed to figure out the time it took to, to land and the distance that it would travel. This marble traveled a distance of 1.47 meters in a time of 0.375 seconds. So that means its horizontal velocity came out to a total of 3.5 92 meters per second. Will that give us our horizontal velocity? We now needed to use trigonometry to figure out what the actual velocity was because the horizontal velocity is different from actual velocity. Using our trigonometric functions, we figured that the horizontal velocity was equal to the actual velocity times cosine of 50 degrees. So we manipulated the equations and we figured out that the actual velocity was equal to our horizontal velocity over cosine over 50, which came out to be 6.1 meters per second, as we can see here. Now we have almost all the components we need. We used this actual velocity to now figure out our vertical velocity. So using a different trigonometric function, we decided that vertical velocity would equal the actual velocity multiplied by the sine of 50 degrees. They came out to be a total of 4.67 meters. So now we have almost all the components. We have our distance, our time traveled, our horizontal velocity, our vertical velocity, and our actual velocity. The only thing we need to know now is at what point did it reach its highest peak? Well, we know that it takes the same time to get up in the air as it does to come down, and so we figured that that would be exactly half of the time of the distance traveled. So if the marble traveled 3.75 meters per second, or seconds, we could figure that it hit its peak at 1.88 seconds. And these are the calculations with which we figured out the marble angle and distance traveled. Thanks for watching.